that we'll be looking at Spearman rank correlation in this video. However, let's look at the data and decide for ourselves the reasons why we have to interrogate this data specifically with the Spearman rank correlation test. Okay, so let's read the example. Great tits are small birds. In a study of growth in great tits, the relationship between the mass of the eggs and the mass of the young bird on hatching was investigated. Okay, so remember what the rules are regarding what are the kind of thing we should look for. With correlation, the thing that we're looking for is that our two variables are measuring different things. So there's two different variables and we want to see whether there is a relationship or association between the two. So that's how we decide that Spearman rank is the right thing to do because we're not looking for a difference. We are looking for a relationship this time and we are looking for our two variables, our two sets of data to be different measuring different things. Okay, so it's not in the case of a t-test where we've got um, x measuring the same thing in two different populations or two different samples. This is measuring different things, maybe for the same population. Okay, um, and instead of looking at for a difference, we're looking for a relationship. So let's proceed. Now we know that we are doing, uh, or we're looking for to determine the Spear Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Now let's go about how to do that. So remember step one, we have to have our null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis will be that there, remember it's the opposite of the experimental hypothesis. So using our uh, biological uh, concepts, we would predict that as the egg mass increased, we would expect that the mass of the chick, you know, that came from the egg would increase. So that, that's what we would go in thinking. But the null hypothesis is not that. The null hypothesis is the unbiased position of the scientist. So we go in assuming that there is no correlation between uh, egg mass and chick mass. There is no correlation between egg mass and chick mass. And that is our null hypothesis. Now, stage two would be to use the data to calculate our test statistic. And in this case, it's going to be the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so let's have a look at the equation. The equation is so the RS is equal to one minus six multiplied by the sum of all the differences, and we'll, we'll discuss what that is, all the differences between the pairs of data squared, uh, and that divided by the number of pairs of data multiplied by the number of pairs of data squared minus one. Okay, so that's what we have to do. Now, this symbol here complicates our equation because what that means is we have to repeat a certain um, a part of this equation a number of times and then uh, add all those values up. So it's not just simply a case of putting numbers into the equation. Again, we have to put all our data through that um, part of the equation and then add them all up. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just go back to our table at the top here and really this is what I would suggest um, you don't have to kind of start from scratch you can build on your table so first the first thing that we do so the the test statistic the RS value is, is really the correlation of the patterns of the data okay so it's ranking so you put all these values in, in a rank. So you rank these values, highest to lowest, and you rank these values highest to lowest. And if the ranks match up, then the R value will be close to one. But if there's a lot of differences, 
um, between the ranks, then the that means that the R value will be um, close to zero. Okay, so it's really essentially it's comparing the differences between the ranks. That's essentially what the R value is measuring. Okay, so uh, let's just rank all these values. So I'll go highest to lowest. So uh, the highest value will be 1.93. So that will be one. The next highest value will be that. The next highest value will be this. The next highest value will be that. The next highest will be that. The next highest will be that and that. Well, that's convenient. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and now we'll go to these. So the highest value is this. Next highest is that. Next highest is uh, this one right here, three, four, five. And now we have two values the same. Okay, so this is how you deal with that. What you do is you don't give them both um, the value of six. What you do is go through this process. Okay, so you say six and seven. And then you average these ranks out. So the average of six and seven would be, or the halfway point between those two would be 6.5. So they both get 6.5, okay? And you would repeat that with, if there were three values, you'd call them six, seven, and eight, and then average those ranks up and give them all a value of seven, okay? Um, so let's proceed. So we've got our ranks now. So the next thing that we do is get the difference between the ranks, because if we look back down at our equation now, uh, the two things that we need input going into the equation is these D values and the N value. And the N value is the number of pairs of data, which we already know is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So N is going to be seven pairs of data and D is going to be the difference in the ranks so now let's extend our table a little bit more so the next thing that we are going to do is look at the differences okay so that okay so uh, the difference here is the difference between 7 and 6.5 is going to be 0.5 the difference between 6 and 6.5 is again going to be 0.5 the difference between 5 and 3 is 2 4 and 5 is 1 3 and 4 is 1 2 and 2 is 0 and 1 and 1 is 0 Okay, so that's, that's the differences. The next thing we need to do is work out all the d squareds because this is what we need to add up. So we'll do d squared next. 0.25, that's going to be 0.25. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 0 squared is 0. Now I just add those up. 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 6.5. So the sum of the d squareds is 6.5. Okay, so now what we do is we can now begin to plug in all the values. So rs is equal to 1 minus, and again I'll do it step by step. 6 in brackets. Now I can put plug in the value of 6.5 here. 6.5 divided by uh, 7 multiplied by 7 squared, which is 49 minus 1. Okay, is equal to step by step. 6 multiplied by 6.5. 
I, I do firmly believe that if you do calculations step by step, deliberately, you save, you save time and you reduce risk of error. Okay, 6 times 6.5 is giving us 1 over 39 divided by, or 1 minus 39 divided by, 49, so that's going to be 48 times 7, 336, so 1, so that is equal to 1 minus, so 39 divided by 336 is 0.116, therefore RS is equal to 1 minus 0.116 roughly. So our RS value is 0.884, okay? Now, what does that tell us? Actually, quite a bit, right? So e even before we start comparing to critical values, um, correlation coefficients can tell you quite a bit. It's not, you can't really say yet, you can't really call it a significant correlation, but even based on that number, it's telling you that a because this number remember the the correlation coefficient can range from minus one to zero to plus one okay now we've got a, a positive value here so it it is a positive correlation as egg mass increased the uh, chick mass also increased and not only is it telling you that there's a positive correlation because you know that number is close to one um, it's, it's telling you that there is a strong positive correlation. Okay, what you can't say yet is whether it's a significant correlation or not. Okay, for that you have to test against the critical value. That's stage two done. We've got our RS value. And now we go on to stage three where we determine the critical value based on the degrees of freedom. Now, for a Spearman rank correlation test, the degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of pairs, the number of pairs of data. So there's no minus ones in this case. So in this case, the degrees of freedom is seven as we have seven sets of data one two three four five six seven degrees of freedom equals seven and now what we need is the table of critical values for the spearman rank correlation coefficient to get our critical value i have inserted here the uh, critical value table for uh, spearman rank correlation coefficient and again um we go across, we look across, looking for, unless otherwise stated, we're looking for the 5% significance level, okay? We could do the test at 2% and 1%, that those are uh, indicators of um, more, greater significance, because your chances of being wrong are smaller, okay? But as standard, we go with 5%, so that's how we go across. But the numbers of pairs of data is what we look at here. We've got seven, and so our critical value is going to be 0.786. Okay, so the critical value is 0.786. Our RS correlation coefficient was 0.884, 0.884. Okay, and we'll stop ourselves from doing anything further because next is stage four. You make your conclusion, remember, in three parts. So, conclusion, part A, we say that the uh, RS value is greater than the critical value at 
level of significance. Okay, so the critical the RS value, you might want to quote it, 0.884 is greater than the critical value at 5% significance, which is 0 0.786. That's, that's the first thing. Next part is what this means. This shows that there is a significant correlation might want to say positive there okay that there is a significant positive correlation between egg mass and chick mass okay and again stating with a 5% chance of error basically and that is spearman rank okay um, again if i have omitted anything if i've made a mistake anywhere uh, please do let me know if anything needs to be clarified leave a message um, i i will respond to individual messages but if there's kind of if there's any significant numbers of inquiry of the same nature, then I'm happy to make follow-up videos to address those concerns.